Now, I want you to um, write these with me, actually. Not, you don't need the whole thing, but just have a look at these guys over here. Let's notice a few things. Do you notice the powers that I've got? Do you notice the powers that I've got? Um, they're all odd. Do you notice that? Now, you can, you can include even ones as well, but it shouldn't surprise us. Some of that intuition should s sort of support why we want odd powers for sine x. Why would odd powers fit with sine x and not so much the even ones? Because they're both odd functions. Because sine x is like quintessential odd function, right? And therefore, if you want to retain that kind of symmetry, like for example, see this parabola over here, right? You don't have to lean all the way off onto this side to get it right, but these guys all center on there. They have the, they have the same kind of symmetry built into them, okay? Now, it takes a bit of hefty calculus to get um, all these numbers down here, okay? But I want you to write down, let's write down, um, this one will do, this one will do. The part that you can see, right? Just consider wealth. Um, the one that I've got highlighted, for instance, uh, this is how much of it. Oh. This is how much of it I had to do to get the level of accuracy to fool you that it would look just like sine x. Okay, um, so you don't need to write all of that. But if you just write, you know, this pattern here, uh, this is a function here. I've got x take away x cubed on three factorial plus x to the five on five factorial. The signs alternate. That's suspicious. Okay, you get the idea. Right. Um, I've got it on the board now, so you can um, use that instead of the screen if you prefer. <clears throat> okay, now, because what we want is like a proper approximation of the sine function, um, I'm going to need this thing to go forever, right? Why does it have to go forever? Because sine goes forever. Because sine goes forever. And it has an infinite number of roots and an infinite number of stationary points. So if I stop anywhere, I'm stuck. If I stop at a million, I'll only have, or only have a million stationary points, right? Well, I'm supposed to have infinite. And there is an infinite chasm between infinity and a million, okay? So this really does have to go forever, okay? So what I want is a way to be able to write forever, to write infinity, without having to write an infinite number of terms. If only I had a way of writing an infinite series of things that all look very similar to each other. Oh! They just change a little bit. I could use sigma notation. Oh. Oh. So oh. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, it's not. That's the problem, right? Well, the limiting sum is sine x. Okay, so that, that's it, right? So that's not very helpful to me. Now, think with me. What will I do? How will I write this in sigma notation? Hmm. Oh, and it's one, two, oh, negative one to the power. Okay, now what you'll notice is now I'm not gonna because of you know time and your brain is rapidly exploding. Okay, I'm gonna show you what my answer is, but I want you to know I am gonna have to use this. Um, I wrote, rubbed it off. I'm gonna have to use this switching factor thing, right? Because look, the signs keep on alternating. Um, I'm also using only the odd powers, right? So when we were going to like general solution, that kind of thing, how did I, what did I use to just get odd numbers? What did I use? Oh. Yeah, 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1, they're both the same, okay? So here's what I've got. I think I've gone from n equals 0 to infinity. The standard form of writing this looks like this. You've got your switch out the front. You've got 2n plus 1. Do you see for n equals 0, that gives us this guy? Over here, and then you can tell me what's on the denominator. And factorial. It's, it's the power, whatever that power was, with a factorial on it. Yeah. So this is two n plus one factorial. So, like I said, it takes some pretty hefty calculus to rigorously prove this thing, but we can still appreciate how it's working, what it's doing. Okay. Now this guy has a special name. Okay. Um, this whole process, this whole process of trying to take some weirdo function and sort of approximate it with a polynomial. This is called polynomial... <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you, but no. Um, this is called polynomial interpolation. That's just a fancy word. That means... Just get me close. Can you get me close? Polynomial interpolation. And this result that you get out, this very special infinite sum, it's a series, right? The guy who first devised these things, he was called Taylor. So this is called a Taylor series. 
Okay, a Taylor series. It's a very, very important structure that um, those of you who do any kind of maths at university will be dealing with a lot. Okay, just the point is, I can come up with an infinite sum, and I can I can approximate, I can interpolate any function you like, anything. That's quite an amazing feat. Okay. All right, now that was that was sine, by the way. This is sine x, and because I'm summing to infinity, it's not approximately equals to. It is actually equal to, which is a crazy idea. Okay. Now continue to play this game with me. Remember, we're actually in complex numbers, right? I've just dealt with sine. What do you think it would look like for cos? Just think about it for a second, right? What kind of symmetry does cos have? Even. It has even symmetry. So it shouldn't surprise you that you're going to use not the odd powers, but all of the even powers. Right? So I, again, just for the sake of time, I've got already written out what the um, Taylor series for the cosine function is. It's one, take away, what do we got here? The format is almost identical. You have the same switching. You have the same factorials and so on. Whoop. Better make sure that goes on forever. Okay? And this is the Taylor series for cosine. Again, we can write it in, um, in sigma notation. What have I got here? Here we go. M equals zero to infinity. I'm still going to have to switch around like this. Maybe you can help me a little bit. If I've already got this bit, I need some powers of x. What powers of x do I need? Yeah, it's just 2n. That'll give me all the even numbers, right? And then on the bottom here, yeah, it's just 2n or factorial. Don't forget, it even works for this guy. I know I've written it differently, but that's x to the naught on naught factorial. Right? Um, naught is an even number, by the way. It, I know it seems a bit weird, but um, it, it follows all the properties that even numbers do. So there you go. There you have it. Okay. Right. Now, do you remember? <clears throat> I went from rectangular form, x plus i, y, and then I said, well, let's get rid of x and y's. Let's get rid of those guys. Okay? And so I replaced them with these. I'm going to pull the same trick. Instead of writing cos theta and sine theta, I don't like these trig functions, right? I have to rely on this thing, okay? So therefore, I'm gonna replace these guys with those guys. Now pause for a minute. A lot of you are like, why? Actually, things are getting worse, aren't they? Like, if you compare this, this line, to this line, like, that was better, wasn't it? Like, that was quicker, it was simpler. And you're like, oh, fine, okay, you like tree. And now you're like, no, forget it. Like, this is just, this is just terrible, okay? Now, here's what I would liken it to. When you go to clean your desk, right? When you go to clean your desk, especially after, like, 12, 13 years of, you know, education, um, probably, uh, unless you're a very particular kind of person, it's a bit of a dog's breakfast, okay? And you're like, you might search for something, and you're, you're looking, you're like, oh, look, there's the cat. And you're like, you have to get everything out of the way. And things look worse for a long time before they get better, right? Like everything sort of ends up on the floor, doesn't it? And you're like, okay, but now that it's all there, now I can like categorize it, now I can group it, and I can see some order among the chaos, okay? Yeah, I know it looks worse. I know it looks worse. But having everything on the floor, <laughs> that's our precursor to actually making this desk make sense. Okay, are you with me? Okay. So take a deep breath, just like I substituted trig into here, I'm going to substitute these Taylor series, just by the way, I know it's like a long time to write, but just to help you like appreciate, like just think about the enormity of being able to make polynomials fit trig function. That's kind of crazy, it's a special kind of crazy, okay? So I'm going to rub this off, while I'm doing that, you can, I'll let you get a head start. This first line here, I just want you to write, you obviously don't need to write all the terms, just enough to get a pattern. That's all I'm after, okay? Can you do that for me? Can you write this, but with these guys in place? Go ahead. 